Hello, exploring coding class. I know I've only been here a week, and I bet you think you got rid of me, but ha ha, I don't scare that easily. I'm going to teach you from beyond the classroom. Ha 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 ha. And I'm going to let you guys know your first major assignment and challenge in my class is to create the greatest video game of all time, Pac-Man. Woohoo! So go to your scratch and hit create. Now, when making a video game, the very first thing we're going to need to do is to create a start button. Well, first thing we're need to do is get rid of this cat. So, click X on the sp uh, the cat sprite, and it will disappear. And we are going to choose a button um, as our first sprite. So, I'm going to click this button here. I'm going to hit costumes. I'm going to grab the paint. I'm going to change the color to black, and I'm going to write start. Excellent. So there's my start button. And now I'm going to need to code my button. And it's going to need to know when to show up. Why? Because how else is going to show up if it doesn't know how? So it's going to start when you click this green flag. So events, when green flag is clicked, you will show. Simple, right? Now we are going to need to make it so this button will send a broadcast or a message to all the other sprites to know when to show up because they shouldn't be on the start page. So we are going to um, use the event, the starting message, when this sprite is clicked. When this sprite is clicked, we are going to send a broadcast message. But we're not going to call it message one because that's going to get confusing. We are going to call it start. So when this sprite clicked, it's going to send a start message to all the other sprites in the game that are going to enter later. And then do we want our start button still on the screen while we're playing? No, that would be hard to see. So we are going to go and go to looks and put in hide. So when the green flag is clicked, the start button shows up. When we click the start button, it hides and sends a broadcast that says start, test it out. If your friend next to you needs help, help them. Pause the video when everybody's got the start button built. Come back and we will make a Pac-Man. Great, now that everybody has got a working start button, let's create a Pac-Man. So I'm going to go to paint. I'm going to hit the circle. And Pac-Man is yellow, so I'm going to choose yellow. And I'm going to make a big yellow circle. Then I'm going to choose an other color. It can be any other color. Oops, no, I, don't, I want my Pac-Man yellow. There you go. Cool. Now I'm going to create a, an other button. Uh, sorry, an other circle. It can be any color you want, just as long as it's not yellow. And I want to do this magenta button. And I don't really want it to have an outline, so I'm going to click no on the outline. Awesome. So here's our first costume. I'm going to call it closed because this is Pac-Man when he has a closed mouth. Then I'm going to right-click the costume and hit duplicate. I'm going to name this one open. Then I'm going to grab the eraser and I'm going to draw in or erase out the area for his mouth. And if you want to put a bow on it and make a Miss Pac-Man, go for it. So there we go. We have a Pac-Man with a closed mouth and an open mouth. Also, if you notice, our Pac-Man is way too big. So I'm going to change the size from 100 to 20. And then I'm going to choose where I want my Pac-Man to start. I'm going to want my Pac-Man to start right here in the middle. Now let's code this baby. Okay, so do we want Pac-Man showing when the green flag is clicked? No, because that will be Missy. So we're going to do when green flag is clicked, we're going to hide Pac-Man. So go to your looks and hit hide. Then you're going to go to advance. And 
we're going to want Pac-Man to show up after the start button is pushed. So when I receive the broadcast message start, we're going to want Pac-Man to, so we're going to go to motion. We're going to want him to go to the coordinates that we dragged him to. So go to the go to X and Y and hit show. And show is in looks. Awesome. So now test it out. Hit green flag, see if Pac-Man disappears. Hit start, see if Pac-Man appears. Cool beans. So have everybody build this, pause the video, and come back. Now that we have a working, uh, working start button and we have a Pac-Man, let's make our maze. So I'm going to go over here to backdrops and I'm going to click paint. I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to change the color of the rectangle and I'm going to just draw in these little bar these bars and make a maze you can draw them wherever you want you are the artist so be more artistic than me um, so I'm drawing in all my maze bars cool now I have a board for Pac-Man to play on and you know what I don't want that on my Pac-Man that will cause problems later on. So make sure Pac-Man has a way out. I also think my Pac-Man's a little too big, but we'll get there in a minute. Cool. So now that I got my maze uh, drawn up, we're going to need to code our maze because look what happens if I hit the green flag. It says start, but my maze is still here. So notice there's backdrop one and backdrop two. So we're going to code, bring down two switch backdrop, backdrops, Go to advance. When green flag clicked, we're going to go to backdrop one. And when I receive the start broadcast, go to backdrop two. Now test it out. Hit green flag. I only see my start button. I hit start. I see my Pac-Man and maze. Simple, right? Now it is time to code our Pac-Man. So click on our Pac-Man sprite down here, and it'll take us back to this code. First thing we're going to need is our Pac-Man to an be animated and always be chomping. So we're going to get into loops. I want to take a forever loop. I'm going to take two time controls. And one second is going to be too long, so I'm going to make it 0.2 seconds for each of them. And then I'm going to go to looks, and I'm going to grab to switch costume lines of code. Click them all together and I'm going to do switch it from closed, wait 0.2 second, go to open, wait 0.2 seconds, and we're going to run that loop forever. So it's going to go open, wait, close, wait, open, wait, close, wait, hit green flag and, and test it out. Hit start and look, my Pac-Man is chomping. Yay! Now in Pac-Man, Pac-Man is always moving, so we're going to need another forever loop. So when I receive start, grab a forever loop, and we're going to forever make Pac-Man move. You know, it's up to you. It comes in at 10 steps, but I think that's a little fast. I want to make it forever four steps. Stop it, hit green flag, test it out, and look, Pac-Man moves. Isn't that delightful? But we can't control Pac-Man. So let's get some controls on Pac-Man. So uh, go to events. And it's going to say when space key is pressed. But we're going to change space key to up arrow. And we are going to go to motions. And grab and point in direction 2. Click the number and get this dial. And I'm going to point it up. Now I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to point it down and change this to down arrow. I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm going to change it to right arrow and take the dial to my right and duplicate it one more time and take the dial to my left. Awesome. So these are our controls. Hit stop, 
play, test it out, and run Pac-Man around through its maze. And I know what you're thinking. Mr. Pike, Pac-Man can totally go through the walls in the maze. That is not cool. You're right. It's not cool. Pac-Man needs to stop on the maze. That's why we have that little pink dot in front of Pac-Man. He's kind of like our feeler. It, it's going to feel the walls. So we're going to need to make a condition for how Pac-Man moves. So a condition, which means it only moves when something happens or if something happens. So we're going to go to controls and we're going to use a conditional block of the if-then statement. And we're also going to need a forever loop. So we're going to grab our forever loop. Actually, we already have a forever loop. It's already here. We're going to need a, to make a condition on when Pac-Man moves. So grab an if-then block. Put it underneath the forever block. And it will now say, when I receive start forever, if something, then move Pac-Man 4. We're going to need to get an operators because we want him to move when he's not touching blue. So we're going to tell the computer, move with not touching blue. And what's this green block right here say? Not. Yay. Now we're going to do sensing. And we're going to grab color touching color. So I'm going to click the first color and grab the swatch down here at the bottom and find that little pink spot, click it. Then I'm going to click the second color, hit the little swatch thing, and hit my blue color. And now let's take a look at our code. Let's test it out. Stop, play, start, and look at that. Pac-Man will not go through blue anymore. If your Pac-Man is too big, you could always change the size here. Uh, a lot of you guys are going to need to do that. So, you know, that ain't that big a deal. But yeah, this is the code for today. And I hope you get through it and have a good time. I will see you all after spring break. This is Mr. Pike signing off saying stay crafty.